His presence suddenly makes Tottenham's transfer window this summer just look like a stroke of genius from Paratici, something that seemed impossible at the start. And early on into the season, it started to look like everything that they've done so far is working. What's up guys, George Lines here and welcome back to the Soconomics YouTube channel and you're watching the rounds. As usual guys, before we head off today's episode, just going to let you know to hit that subscribe button if you are new. If you like football content, you like football finance, football economics, that sort of stuff, then this is the channel for you. So hit that subscribe button and continue watching. Also, don't know if you can see guys, I've made a few changes in my room, got a bit of a different setup in here, trying to take things up a bit. Obviously a bit of a work in progress, but just a bit better than having a look at my bed the entire time. It's a work in progress, but it's a start. Right, so obviously today's topic is about Tottenham Hotspur, but more specifically, we're talking about why things are looking a whole lot brighter for the future of the club. But before we get to that, let's talk about Tottenham Hotspur in recent times. Of course, flashback to about 2018-19 season, they reached the Champions League final, which was obviously the biggest day in the club's history. It was a huge day for Mauricio Pochettino, and uh, it was the height of the club. It was the, the height of the golden age that they had created over the past four or five years. But of course, what goes up must come down. Tottenham have become a bit of a meme club. Club, the OG bottle merchants, the nearly club, the club who has reached absolutely everything but fallen at the final hurdle every single time. Don't get me wrong, everything that Tottenham has done in recent years has been nothing short of an extraordinary feat, from Mauricio Pochettino to Daniel Levy to the players on the pitch. In what is such a competitive league, Tottenham were able to create and build a squad of world-class players that was able to compete for league titles and compete in European titles as well. And all this is with a net spend of next to nothing. Tottenham became that model club that everyone was trying to replicate. Whilst minimizing their resources, they were maximizing results. They just didn't get the titles or the trophies to cement their achievements. After what was a pretty disappointing Champions League final in 2019, Mauricio Pochettino expressed the importance of where the club was at. He stated that if the club want to continue moving forward, they need to start thinking about reinvesting into the future of the club and his plans. It was pretty obvious that the current squad of players needed some reinvestment. They were not getting any younger and replenishments were necessary. However, of course, this didn't quite happen and midway through the 1920s, season, Mauricio Pochettino got sacked, which uh, I still can't believe happened, but that was purely because the performances just took a huge dip. And since then, the decline at Tottenham Hotspur has been more than apparent. Core group of players from Poch's era were starting to leave. You think of Christian Eriksen, Jan Vertonghen, Moussa Dembele. Although some of these players were down to age, some of them were leaving because they wanted a new challenge. The writing seemed on the wall for Tottenham Hotspur as their talisman, their England captain, had strong links of leaving the club, getting a transfer to either Manchester City or Manchester United. It was looking pretty bleak, to be honest, for the club. I mean, you think about this, this would have been the end of the golden era for the club. However, the mood is suddenly starting to change. After the first three games of this season, Tottenham are sitting on the top of the league with a 100% record, not even conceding a goal. And that included a win against Manchester City, which, albeit Man City dominated most of the game, but they still came out on top without conceding. Now, obviously, it's very early on into the season. I'm not saying that Tottenham are challenging for the title, and of course, no title has been won in three games. But what I am saying is that there has been a lot of credit being put onto, obviously, Nuno Espirito Santo, their coach, and of course, the players as well. But there is a silent saviour among these. That's that's right, I'm talking about the appointment of director of football Fabio Paratici from Juventus at the end of last season. Paratici is widely regarded as an absolute workaholic in the football world. I mean, for God's sake, you'd rarely see a photo of the guy without a phone to his ear. Paratici began his career at Sampdoria in 2004, where he was the head of scouting, actually, um, before moving on to Juventus as sporting director in 2010. This is obviously a very pivotal time for Juventus, as not long after his appointment, this was when Juventus started to win everything in Italy. Since then, obviously, he's played a huge part in the old ladies' dominance of Serie A, and he was responsible for bringing the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, Andrea Pirlo, Federico Chiesa in modern times as well. A lot of very important players. However, now he's accepted a new challenge at Tottenham Hotspur. The task, of course, being a huge one, try and get rid of the older generation of players and bring in a new generation of young, up-and-coming talents that is capable of challenging for the Premier League title and compete on the European stage. So in his first summer at Tottenham Hotspur, what's he done? Well, this isn't exactly a quick fix, is it? I mean, Rome wasn't built in a day. Like, where do you even start? Well, let's have a look at Tottenham's outgoings. To be able to invest in a new generation of players, you've got to obviously offload some players. Uh, the players that are obviously aging, past their best, but also these are the players that take up most of the wage bill. Paratici has managed to successfully move on in his first summer, 32-year-old centre-back Toby Alderweireld to Aldo Hale, 32-year-old Musa Sissoko and 31-year-old Danny Rose to Watford, 34-year-old Joe Hart to Celtic, 29-year-old Paolo Gazzaniga 
to Fulham, 29-year-old Eric Lamella to Sevilla, 23-year-old Juan Foy to Villarreal, and terminate the contract of 28-year-old Serge Aurier. You can see that most of these players are around the age of 30-31, which obviously isn't so old, but when your entire core squad is about that age, it's kind of a bit worrying. With an aging group of players, obviously there's not a lot of room for growth, and with such a lot of wages being taken up by that, it's a lot easier to offload these players to make room for younger players where there is obviously that growth. The club also managed to receive fees of 32.7 million euros for those outgoing players, which is actually pretty impressive, especially considering that a lot of these players are in their final years of their contract. Okay, so now we know who's left, who's come in? With a lot of very important players now gone from the club, it's very important that Spurs invest smartly and promptly into the transfer market to replace these players' positions. For example, to replace Toby Alderweireld at centre-back, they brought in 23-year-old Argentine centre-back and Serie A player of the year last year, Christian Romero from Atalanta. He arrives initially on loan to Tottenham from Atalanta. However, he has an option to buy for 55 million euros, which is obviously a huge statement of intent from the club. To replace Eric Lamella on the wing, they've brought in 20-year-old Brian Gill from Sevilla for 25 million euros, who enjoyed a solid breakout year last season at struggling Ibar. They also signed 22-year-old Emerson Royal from Barcelona for 25 million euros. That is obviously to replace Serge Aurier in right back and provide some competition with Matt Doherty. They're also looking very long-term. One for the future at the moment is 18-year-old Pape Saad. They've just signed from Mets for 16.9 million euros. A very talented, exciting, up-and-coming talent. He's only 18 years old and they've sent him back on loan to Mets to further develop in Ligue 1. And finally, to replace the departing backup goalkeepers in Gassaniga and Joe Hart, they have brought in Pierluigi Gallini from Atalanta as well, initially on loan, but with an option to buy 15 million euros. This looks to be a very solid start for the succession plan from Paratici, as he has not only successfully moved on older players and freed up some space on the wage bill, he's also brought in some very exciting up and coming talents that have a lot of potential in the club. However, despite this great business, it just seemed as if Tottenham were just preparing for life after Harry Kane. And that is why the greatest business of all last season was the retention of their talisman, their captain, the England captain, Harry Kane, after such a long summer of speculation. His presence suddenly makes Tottenham's transfer window this summer just look like a stroke of genius from Paratici, something that seemed impossible at the start. And early on into the season, it's starting to look like everything that they've done so far is working. With three wins from three so far, thanks to, of course, the tactics and the discipline so far of their new manager, Nuno Espirito Santo, and obviously the form of Hyunmin Son so far as well. Speaking of Nuno Espirito Santo, his appointment from Paratici seems to be quite a smart one. Although he has his critics for having a slightly more pragmatic approach, when it comes to attacking, he usually likes to go fast counter-attacks, abusing the pace that he has up front as opposed to slick build-up play. He is a brilliant coach. He's brilliant at coaching discipline into his players, demanding work ethic and fitness levels as well in order to be able to play his style of play. In a way, it's sort of a bit like Mauricio Pochettino in the way that he could get players to run through walls for him. He also likes to use a smaller, tighter squad to enable to have that consistency within performances in the team, which is actually really good for Tottenham Hotspur. It's a very efficient way of managing a small squad of players, especially when Tottenham Hotspur are in a bit of a rebuild at the moment. If you can get the most out of a smaller group of players, that obviously buys them so much more time. The key to Tottenham's success is just maintaining fitness levels and making sure that no players, no players get any serious injuries Last season, unfortunately, Nuno did have a bit of an underwhelming last season at Wolves. That is mainly down to, okay, of course, you had some players leave like Diogo Jota early on in the season, which obviously didn't help them. But players like Raul Jimenez just got major injuries throughout the season. He basically wasn't there the entire season. That obviously has a bit of an effect. So you can see what injuries can do to a team, especially when they use a small amount of players. So, of course, if Tottenham can avoid having such a major injury uh, to, I don't know, Harry Kane, Holman Son, Christian Romero, any of these players like that, then there's no reason why they can't get top four obviously it's very early on and that isn't maybe the goal this season obviously it's more of a long-term rebuild but hey if they can do that that is obviously you can see that it can work in the long term however i have no doubt in my mind that paratici is going to lead them to success this is a man that has gotten used to finding a way to win he's an absolute workaholic that is something you love to see within your club he you know that he's going to go above and beyond to try and get success to the club so you know what tottenham fans it's not that bad at the moment it's looking a lot, actually a lot better than it was 12 months ago but that's all i've got time for you today guys thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed today's episode if you did be sure to leave a like button down below if you want to give us some feedback be sure to leave a comment as well and most of you guys are actually not subscribed we are trying to aim for 500 500 subscribers before the end of this month so if you can help us achieve that that'd be much appreciated i've actually got a bet on with my housemate right now so do us a favor but yeah thank you so much guys and uh i will catch you very soon being a stranger to what we lost i'll keep my guard down and hope it comes back around because i still just feel like
Space between 